So today we're going to look at audio. So to do that, I'm going to just open up the asset store. Let's go over to audio. Start off in sound effects. I'm just going to go down to other. Make sure we click free only. And there's a whole bunch of sound effects here. It doesn't really matter which one you grab. We're just looking for something that's going to be very short. Uh, remember our button press is only a quarter of a second. At least that's what I have mine set to. So I want sound effects that are going to fit within that. If it's a little bit long, that's fine. Later on, I know I'm going to be grabbing Audacity and making my sound effects through that. But for now, I just want something to be able to play when I click on buttons. So go ahead, grab something. If anyone's wondering, they want the exact same one. I grabbed this one. I don't know if it's actually going to really work out well. I'll probably want to switch it down the road. But like I said, it doesn't really matter. I know I'm not keeping these sound effects. I just want something for a placeholder. So go ahead, download it. It'll automatically incorporate it into your package. And let's come back and go into our hierarchy. Let's grab that prefab of a button we're looking at. And we want to go ahead and add what's called an audio source. And I don't want to add it this way. We can. I guess we will this, this time. For this time here, we're going to go ahead and add it. And where it says audio clip, that's the sound we want to actually add. Now, in our last project, we went ahead and played with sound, but we didn't actually, well, we had sound, but we didn't actually look into it. So this is our first time around. So we're going to be looking at audio sources and audio listeners in this video. And this is the audio source. So go into your sound effects. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one. I'm just going to grab the wave ones. And I'm looking for something, like I said, that's only about a quarter of a second long. This is going to be too long. If you want to hear it, you can click on this. You also have the loop button. But I'm looking for something much smaller. This might have actually turned out to be a really bad one. Well, there's some footsteps. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll just go ahead. We'll, no, I want something a little bit more than that. Uh, what do we got? Oh, inventory stuff. Sure, good enough. We'll go ahead, we'll go with that. So I'm going to select my button. Then inside the audio clip, there's two ways to add it. The one I always do is just click and drag, drag it up. Of course, you could click the little target button over here and search for it that way. I just find it easier to drag and drop. All right, so the output, we're not going to be playing with audio mixtures just yet. Mute is just that. It'll mute it. We're not going to be playing with the effects or listener effects. Uh, we want to turn off play on awake. If we leave that on when we start the game, your sound automatically plays. And we don't want that. We only want it to play when we call a method to actually play it. And then we'll go ahead. We're not going to loop it. Uh, we're not going to bother playing around with priority or, or any of the volumes or pitch or anything. Ah, oh, pitch, maybe we could crank it up. We'll play with that a little bit later when we actually get real sound effects that we want in here. But that's really about it. Assign your audio clip and turn off play on a wake. And of course, I'm going to go ahead, apply the changes made to my button. And let's go ahead and jump into that audio section of our button script. So again, just to make sure I don't run into any problems later on, I'm going to use this new tag, require component. And that means that when we add this script to a game object, it's going to make sure that there's a certain component already attached to the script. And if it's not, it's going to add it for us. Now we have to say what type we want and the component, which is an audio source. There we go. Now we know it's there. I'm never actually going to need um, to store that value or anything. So what I'm going to do, I do want to cache it though. So I'll store it down here just as a private. And I'm just going to call it sound. Then in my awake, I tend to cache almost everything. Not that it's needed so much with Unity 5 anymore. It's just something I've always done from the earlier versions, and it's just always held over for me. So we know how to get a, go out and get a component that we know is attached, right? We just use the get component. We've done that a couple times. Uh, we want to do the type that we want, which is an audio source. And that is it. So when we come down here and we click the button, uh, before we invoke the reset, I'm going to do it right after the color change. We could do it right above it. Either one will work. Let's do it right above it. Uh, sound dot play. And this will go ahead and play that sound. So we'll go ahead. We'll stop it there. We'll save it off. Sorry. Go ahead. Start it up. Wait for it to start up. And we'll go ahead and click our button. There we go. So we haven't looked at audio listeners yet. Let's go ahead and do that. So if we click our main camera, it already has an audio listener on it right here. 
And the thing about audio listeners that you only ever want one in your scene, if you were to go ahead and let's take this directional light and add another one, you're gonna get a warning in the console here that there's more than one audio listener. Sorry, there are two audio listeners in the scene. And the way the audio listener works is that it gives the, the sound, well, it's gonna output the sound based on where that audio listener is positioned in the world relative to the sounds, provided that the sounds are 3D. And if you start putting more than one in the world, it's not gonna know the position to basically project that sound from. So usually you wanna put that audio listener on whatever, on wherever your person is in the game. Usually your camera is there as well. So by default on the main camera, it's pretty good. Sometimes you're gonna to wanna to move it depending on the, the style or the aesthetic of your game. Maybe you have a, a top down type view and your, your character's kind of like off to the side running around. You could go ahead and put the audio listener on uh, maybe the root object of your uh, player. And that way there as he's running through the world, even though you're looking straight down on him, you'll still get sounds from like left and right and forward and back, that positional audio. But that's it, as long as you have one somewhere in your scene, you'll be able to hear. And as audio sources, you can have as many as you want in your scene. As we go ahead and finish off our prefab and start reapplying it to these other buttons, we're gonna end up with at least four audio sources that our camera can pick up because of its audio listener. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. But I'm not walking through a forest are being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears.